the word. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. To begin with, I would like to thank the real organizers of this conference, Professor uh, Yong Jun Kim and Mrs. Uh, Hee Juno. Um, the hospitality in Daejeon is wonderful, and it has been a pleasure starting a, a collaboration with Yong Jun. I'm very, very grateful. So today, I would like to talk about a time evolution problem for uh, E. coli colonies. This is joint work with uh, uh, Gregor uh, Karsch from the University of Wrocław and his PhD student, Rafael Chelinski. And there is also a well-known Japanese collaborator, Professor Masayasu Mimura from Meiji University. So, Um, so, some words now about the biological context. So, the purpose of, has been to explain patterns arising in experiments with strains of E. coli bacteria. So, many years ago, Budrin and Berg have performed experiments showing that chemotactic strains of bacteria E. coli inoculated in a semi-solid agar, form stable and remarkably complex but geometrically regulated spatial patterns, such as small swarm rings, radial spots, and interdigitated arrays of spots. A purpose of Mayan Mimur and his group has been to propose mathematical models to reproduce these patterns. So here you have two references. One of the two, uh, two papers in Nature of Budrin and Berg, where they report about real biolog biological experiments with uh, bacteria in uh, petri dishes. And they see photos. And you will see one of them in a second. Then here you have an article of Aotani, Mimura, and Molly which is about the model and about numerical simulations. So, sorry, may I? I guess, um, how do I? Uh, but this is, uh, don't touch this, just this three. Ah, this is Gamsa Hamida. So, uh, now, um, so here you have a picture, a, a, a photo of the biological experiments in one of the, um, the nature journals. So you have, you see here a petri dish and it is a real uh, patterns with uh, real E. coli bacteria. And this is very pretty, very symmetrical. And I have, uh, I have observed, I have seen sometimes Mayan Mimura with, uh, uh, with his uh, own work. He spends months to, to, to make, to draw lines and to measure angles and so on and so forth. It's a very precise work uh, to, for him to study the patterns which he would want to reproduce. So now, I will show you two successive models which are helpful to reproduce these patterns. And the first one we have just heard about during the last seminar, it is a, a, chem a chemotaxis model. So uh, here, and maybe I will write those models on the blackboard. So here you have the chemotaxis system as shown by uh, um, Professor uh, Izuhara. So we have UT equals uh, DU Laplace and U a minus divergence of U gradient I guess K of V uh, K of C sorry so here we use the notation C plus F of U coupled with 
a parabolic equation for C. CT equals DC Laplace and C plus alpha U minus a constant beta C. So this is exactly the model uh, 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 presented at some point by Izuhara san. So here U denotes the density of cells and C is a concentration of a chemotactic attract uh, attractant. So you have here the chemotaxister. All the constants here, DU, DC, alpha, beta are positive. K is a so-called sensitivity function. Uh, and F is a growth function. So in the absence of uh, the function F, you have the Keller-Siegel model, at least a special case of the Keller-Siegel model. So what does the function F do for us? With the Keller-Siegel model, you know that in some cases, the solution exists for all times. In other cases, it blows up. The term F of u, uh, with typically uh, the, the choices that Izuhara san has shown us, that is f of u equals u, 1 minus u, monostable, or f of u equals u, 1 minus u squared, bistable. Here we will, <laughs> if we speak about this model, I'd rather speak about the bistable case, uh, <laughs> permit to keep the, the function u bounded. It prevents blow up. I should also mention an article I wrote with uh, Mimura and Elizabeth Logak many years ago. So at that time, we, we had an elliptic equation for C. So here we, uh, we had a zero. And we studied the singular limit of this equation, of this system, when uh, we added, when, we, when f of u was multiplied by um, a very large parameter. When that parameter tends to infinity, uh, u, u converges to uh, two constants outside of an interface which moves <coughs> um, according to mean curvature, possibly perturbed mean curvature. So now, uh, now Mayan Mimura wanted to be more precise and introduces a third equation for a nutrient. So here we have our third equation, but it's not quite the same, so I should rather, I, it's not quite the same. So first, the equation for you. So we have the same diffusion term, I guess the same chemotaxis term. Now we have a different growth term, g of u uh, n u minus b, uh, b, of, uh, b of n u. I will give later the precise mathematical hypothesis which we will assume. Then the same equation for the concentration of the chemotactic attractant. Or, or exactly the same. And then an equation for the nutrient, for the concentration of the nutrient, uh, dn Laplace and n, um, and then minus gamma uh, g of u um, n u. So, then here you have pictures, so numerical pictures, you, uh, which, are, which are for an unknown I have not yet written, you have not yet seen, so a certain unknown connected to the function u, but not quite, you will see. You start with um, just a, a single a little uh, delta peak, and little after little, uh, the pattern grows 
uh, with the solution of this system. And you have what Nimura calls a chevron pattern, which is very pretty, and which is essentially what was observed in the experiments I showed you before. So then Mayan Nimura introduces one more species, that is what you is the active bacteria he introduces a density W of inactive bacteria, which are defined by the equation WT equals B of N U. Now we have our complete system. So of course, we need the knowledge of, of uh, U, C, necessary C, and N to compute W, but you don't need the knowledge of W uh, to compute the other known, so it's not really a coupled system. So, um, in order to visualize what is W, in fact, it is memory. It is memory of what happened with the term B of N U at all previous times. So, here you have numerical pictures. On the one hand, you have u at time close to zero, and on the other hand, you have u plus w. So at time zero here, it says. And they involve u has a ring and gets empty inside the ring, and u plus w gets a well-known pattern. OK. So now what is known mathematically, so the existence and uniqueness of the solution was proved by uh, To, Mimura, and Takagi in the case of one space dimension and for a special choice of the functions chi, g, and n. So and this on an infinite time interval. So now what do we study today? We study the problem in um, higher space dimension, but also we will revisit the case of one space dimension. So we have the equations which I have written on the blackboard together with homogeneous Neumann boundary conditions and non-negative initial conditions, which you have here. So uh, <coughs> now what are the precise assumptions? <coughs> we suppose that all the coefficients which appear here are positive constant, uh, well defined, du, dc, dn, alpha, beta. And now we have to characterize the functions g, b, and chi. We suppose that they are continuously differentiable, that um, so we have that uh, G, B, and chi belong to C1. Then, um, so G of zero equals zero. Uh, G is increasing, strictly increasing. Um, and bounded from above by a positive constant G0. Now, about B, we have that B of 0 is a positive constant. B is uh, decreasing and remains positive. And chi prime belongs to L infinity. So, 
Okay, so here I am going to give uh, no proofs but show you a couple of results which we have obtained. So first case, space homogeneous solutions. So you start from initial functions, from in, uh, was the init a case from the initial functions are constant, u0 bar, c0 bar, uh, n0 bar, w0 bar. And so uh, taking such initial values, we get a solution uh, which does not depend on x. So that is, we get a solution quadrupole, which is <coughs> the solution of the um, corresponding uh, system of ODEs. So what we obtain is that for every non-negative constant initial condition, the corresponding solution is global in time and converges exponentially fast to the constant vector 0, 0, n bar infinity, w bar infinity, for some n bar non-negative n bar infinity and non-negative w bar infinity, which depend on the initial conditions. And one way to obtain this result is to analyze the phase portrait of the corresponding system of ordinary differential equation. So note that here, oh, I should have said it. We work with, oh, I, I did say quickly, I guess. We work with homogeneous Neumann boundary condition. So du dn on the edge, sorry, I will put n is one of the unknowns, so we have to write, to use another notation. So du d nu equals dc d nu equals uh, dn d nu equals zero. Uh, uh, on uh, uh, d omega. So we work in a bounded domain omega with a smooth enough boundary. So all these equations are on omega cross zero t, or I will write infinity. And we have some prescribed initial conditions. U of uh, at time zero equals U zero, C at time zero equals C0, and we also prescribe N and W. W at time zero is given as well. So, now uh, we do something else. We, uh, we have a result which states the following. Suppose that we have a non-negative solution U, C, N, and W of this system, and consider the, integr the integral um, of omega of the solutions. Oh, before I give this result, in fact, I put, I wrote explicitly the problem also with a boundary condition just to uh, to stress the fact that when you, when you have the um, solutions which are uh, constant in space, of course they are both solutions of the corresponding system of ODEs, but also of the PDEs which you have here because of the homogeneous Neumann boundary conditions. So, now we consider the integral, given a solution, we consider the integral of omega of each component, and we prove that the integral omega of u of x and t converges to zero, and the integral of c of t on omega converges to zero as t tends to infinity, and that there exist positive constants, uh, n infinity and w infinity, such that the integral of n converges to l infinity and the integral of w uh, converges to w infinity. Sorry. 
So after that, we revisited the case of, uh, of d equals 1. So in the case that d equals 1, uh, if we, um, if we uh, refer to the usual uh, Keller-Siegel model, we know that what we expect is we always have existence, no blow up. So here also we, ha we always have existence. And so uh, we revisit the result of Tomi, Moore, and Takagi in the case of the more general uh, functions with the hypotheses which I've given here. And we have the following result. Assume that d equals 1 and omega <laughs> is an open bounded domain with a smooth enough boundary for each initial condition u naught and not w naught in L infinity and C0 slightly smoother in W1 infinity of omega, the corresponding solution U, C, and W exists for all time. Moreover, there exists a constant N infinity and a non-negative function W in L infinity such that U, C, and W converges to 0, 0, N infinity and W infinity of X as t tends to infinity, <coughs> and this convergence is exponential. So now in a higher space dimension, so my Polish colleagues are, are used to do very technical estimates, and so they, um, they work um, with uh, very technical spaces uh, using a book from a a well-known Japanese professor, uh, namely Professor Yagi. And all along uh, our study, we are taking a lot of inspiration of this book of Yagi. So <coughs> uh, Yagi defines the following spaces, uh, H2n, the space of function in H1, such that du dn equals zero on d omega. Um, and the function H4N2, the functions U in H2N, such that Laplace and U is in H2N. And then uh, we can deduce, as it is done by Yagi in the case of the keller siegel model, that for every U0, C0, N0, and W0 in this space, there exists a time t such that the solution, the problem possesses a unique local in time solution given in those spaces. So continuous in time with values in some Hilbert space. And so I guess the main question is now, do those solutions exist globally in time or do they blow up? And in fact, we do not obtain blow-up results. So at least I will show you something which looks like it, but which is very weak. So uh, first sort of result which you may expect, it is about the signs of the solution. We deal with densities of bacteria, of chemotactic attractant, of nutrient. So we expect all the quantities to be non-negative non negative or strictly positive. In fact, they are strictly positive uh, if the initial data is uh, non-zero. So we suppose that u naught, c naught, n naught, and w naught are non-negative. And then using a maximum, an argument connected with a maximum principle, we see that u, c, n, and w stay positive at each time. So to get a feeling of why it is true, you see that u equals 0 is a solution of the first PDE. Uh, n equals 0 is a solution of the third PDE. Once you have that u is non-negative, we have uh, here uh, an inequality with a uh, right sign, the right inequality sign. And here, once we know that B and uh, uh, we know that B is strictly positive, U is positive, so W can only increase. And uh, if we start with W not non-negative, we will stay. We will become positive. 
Do I have? I don't know because the, uh, in general, in higher dimensions, the killer single has a growth of finite time. But you are saying any is bound by some initial data. I mean, oh, so okay, so I will. C uh, we have very few blow. Uh, we have only one single blow up result. I will show you. Uh, I will show you the results we have. Uh, in the case of precisely these equations which you see here, we have either local in time, uh, local in time existence or global in time existence with some conditions. We have no, absolutely no blow up results, but it, they are not excluded. I understand, but uh, I'm wondering the estimate. Because the n is bounded by the initial. Ah, sure, but we only have it for n. And uh, look. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So you look at n, things are going fine because we, we have a good sign here. So we do not. Uh, we uh, this d such a result does not exclude blow up. It d does not exclude blow up for the quantity u. It only tells us that the quantity, the density of nutrients, stays bounded by the n infinity norm of the initial data. That's all. So no contradiction. So then, okay. So what? Now I will uh, this. Uh, this result is a smallness, uh, a result of um, global existence in the case of the initial functions are small enough. So it is rather a, a standard look. Um, if the initial data are small, we expect in some cases to have global existence, and this is what happens here. So suppose that D, the space dimension is either 2 or 3, and <laughs> let U, C, N, W be a non-negative local in time solution. Fix P naught between, uh, so here, wait. Um, okay, I, uh, I think I have miss, uh, missed something. In my, uh, in my, oh no, no, it's okay, sorry. So we fix P naught between D over 2 and D over D minus 2. So there exists epsilon 0 positive such that if the maximum of uh, the LP, the norm of U naught in LP naught, the norm of N0 in L1, the norm of gradient C0 in L2 P0 is less than epsilon, then the solution exists for all times. And in particular, the soup of the infinity norm of U is bounded. Okay. Then there exists a constant n infinity positive and a non negative function w infinity such that u, c, n, and w converges to u to zero, c to zero, and to the constant n infinity and w to a function w infinity. And this is exponentially fast in time. So if the initial data are small, then we have global existence. Here we have another result which, uh, which explains a bit the paper, the results, numerical results of Aotani, uh, Mimura, and Molly in the paper I have mentioned before. I forgot which sensitivity function they take, but a sensitivity function which follows this condition. And when the sensitivity function is such that d chi ds is less than a constant over 1 plus cs to the power k for some positive constant chi naught and c, and, uh, sorry, I am, yes, and the exponent larger than 1, 
then the solution exists globally and the L infinity norm of U stays bounded. And we have the same behavior as described before. So this explains that uh, in the numerical uh, modeling and numerical al article of Mimura and his co authors, they never have blow up. They can compute the solution for all times because <laughs> the, their sensitivity function satisfies this hypothesis. So now we wanted to have a counter example, we wanted to have a blow up result. And so we don't have a blow up result for the model which I have shown to you. So uh, so what we do, we, however, we have a blow up result. So here we replace the parabolic problem by an elliptic equation, the corresponding elliptic equation, and then we have something which may look like nearly a blow-up result, which I will give you in a minute. So, I mean, I am not a specialist of blow-up problems, but I will say some naive remark. When, when we have here an elliptic problem, if we have U coupled with C, um, we, uh, in the standard keller siegel model, so without this term, then <coughs> there are many existence and non-existence with blow-up result in this case, parabolic coupled to elliptic. However, uh, very few results, blow-up results are known when you have a parabolic equation coupled to another parabolic equation. So technically this is much harder. So this is why here we take the same equations for U, N and W and an elliptic equation for C, you have it here, with again Neumann boundary conditions and initial conditions prescribed, only uh, no initial condition for C which satisfies an elliptic equation. And so our result is the following, suppose that D equals 2 assumes that k naught is positive and Consider a local in time non-negative solution UCN of the coupled parabolic elliptic system and assume that the initial uh, data is large enough that its average M0 is larger than the constant 8 pi over k naught. Then for every Q um, in omega there exists a, <coughs> a real number epsilon of Q positive such that if this integral, integral of omega of U naught of X, X minus Q minus Q to the squared is less than epsilon of Q, then the solution U, C, N cannot be extended to a global one. So it's not yet a blow up result but it looks like it could become one. And the proof of this result closely follow a proof given by Yagi in his book in the case of the keller siegel model. So uh, now I have written, I have wanted to say something about mathematical methods. So first of all, so uh, a basic formula f which we use for each PDE is the Duhamel formula, which you see here. And here, we, uh, this, is a, this part is a solution of the um, heat equation with uh, initial value and not. Here we have the heat equation minus the beta, which we have here, the, the solution of CT equals DC Laplacian C minus beta C. And here again the solution of the heat equation plus an integral term taking in account all the non uh, the nonlinear functions. So we use these formulas, and then when we want to estimate a norm, we say that the norm of U in some space is less than the sum of the norms of this term, this term, and this term. And then so we use very fine estimates for the solution of the heat equation and I have written the sort of estimates which we are using. 
examples. So now uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. Gamsa Hamnida. <laughs>